everyone. Security is a big, big thing here at VMworld this year, and we're over at the High Trust booth to learn a little bit more about their new virtual friends. So, Eric Chu, could you please introduce yourself and talk us through what the High Trust appliance is? Perfect. Thank you, Jeremy. Um, so, Eric Chu, I'm founder and president here at High Trust. We're excited to be here at our uh, sixth VMworld and with our close partner and investor, VMware. Uh, we're excited, we also announced the fact that Intel, uh, as well as VMware, as well as Cisco, are all investors in HITRUST, and if you think about the leaders in the next generation data center, we're strategic to their data center efforts. Um, HITRUST is really focused on enabling companies to virtualize more and virtualize faster, right? Move faster to the cloud. Private cloud, hybrid cloud, public cloud. And we do that by mitigating the concentration of risk and potential for catastrophic failure that virtualization and cloud introduces, which ultimately uh, enables companies to securely virtualize all their workloads and uh, adopt the cloud in much faster um, ways. Okay, well that sounds really good. I mean, I'm talking to a lot of customers and they love the benefits of cloud computing virtualization, but it is putting all your eggs in one basket. So I can see that this is truly important to customers. Um, I was also hearing a, a sort of a, a referral to the, the old situation in security where people are referring to a castle and a moat. Can you tell a little bit about how that changed and what you guys are doing for that? Yeah, no, that's a, that's a perfect question. And, in a lot of ways, companies historically have always focused on what we would call an outside-in model to security. Let me build a perimeter, right? And with technology, that would be firewall, IDS, IPS. In the medieval days, that would be a moat, high walls in the castle, uh, you name it. Today, with virtualization and cloud, that perimeter's almost disappeared, right? You no longer have this ability to really say what is on the inside, what is on the outside. The entire data center is now remotely accessible and remotely administered. And in the end, taking an analogy of Game of Thrones, right? It wasn't the fact that you have these great big walls and moats, it's people on the inside that ended up overthrowing uh, the, the government. And so similarly with data centers, you know, whether you worry about your own employees doing something bad that they shouldn't be, like stealing confidential top secret or customer data, whether you worry about them potentially uh, misconfiguring the environment and taking down the data center, right, in terms of downtime, or whether you worry about what's really the new con, right, the fact that outside attackers are using advanced threats to steal credentials and gain access to companies so that they can get to this confidential information that resides in these data centers. And you know, with that uh, concentration of risk, the fact that you're running all of your workloads in this one environment, and the fact that everything lives in software, you no longer, if you think about a Snowden-like incident, you no longer have to look for specific files, just copy and take the virtual machine with you undetected, or potentially hit delete and destroy the entire data center in a matter of uh, seconds. Yeah, exactly. Well, that sounds like a key uh, technology that everyone should have in their data centers. Um, you made a very good point, but our viewers are very technical, so maybe we could have a look at some of the, the product screenshots and, and see how it actually works. Perfect. Yeah, and that's best that I don't lead that because um, I'm not the expert on the product, but I do have a product expert here with me, uh, Bill Roche, who can walk you through uh, the product in technical detail. Perfect. Thank you, Eric. Hi, Bill, how are you doing? Very good to meet you. Could you show a little bit about what you guys are doing and what it looks like. Absolutely. I can bring you through uh, the multi-tenant uh, interface for uh, High Trust and sh showing how we're doing policy enforcement around multi-tenancy. So if we actually walk through this demo, what you'll see is within the High Trust appliance, we're actually going and creating uh, tags for particular assets within your virtual environment, okay? And we can go in, in this case, actually label these as tenant A and tenant B resources within the vCenter resource tree, okay? And what we're going to do is actually create rules to enforce policy about who can access those particular resources within vCenter, okay? So in here you have the HITRUST rules interface and you can see we have the tenant A and tenant B rules which are permitting and restricting access to those particular assets within the vCenter resource tree. So as an administrator would go in to actually operate on those resources, we can see that they log in, we know what they have access to, and we can either permit or limit the, their ability to change uh, you know, particular objects and resources within, within VMware's vCenter. 
Okay, and you're doing this invisible to the person logging in, and you're sort of a proxy in between vCenter and the ESX server, right? Absolutely. What we like to uh, say is that we are a transparent proxy to your VMware administrators, and as they walk through, they're not going to change anything they do on a day-to-day -day basis. They're going to still use vCenter, they're all, the, all their normal tools. The only reason they'll know high trust is in line is if they to try to perform an operation outside of their privilege level. So basically you're protecting the corporation to do exactly what they're supposed to do and nothing more. Exactly, exactly. We're keeping the, what I put, put it as is, we're keeping the administrators in the need to access zone, right? They are only accessing what they need to access. Perfect, and there's often also a gray area. They can do certain things, they cannot do other things, but what about the gray area? Could you do something like giving approvals to people? We absolutely can, actually, and if we walk through here, we actually have a brief demonstration of our secondary approval feature, and really what we're designing there is to make sure that no single administrator, whether it's by mistake or malicious intent, could perform actions and create a, a path of unilateral damage on your virtual infrastructure. So what we have here is an administrator that comes into the environment and they go ahead and try to, uh, actually let me move forward a little bit, they go ahead and try to power off a virtual machine. So we'll have it carry through here. So they're gonna go in and say, hey, I'd like to go ahead and power off this particular virtual machine. They say yes. And what HITRUST does is they, we see that action and this organization has gated that particular action as one requiring secondary approval. So HITRUST will intercede and say this action requires secondary approval. It will send out a message to an approvers group and that approvers group has to go through and either approve or deny that action from occurring in order to allow it to continue. Perfect, well that sounds really good because basically what you're doing is if someone makes a mistake for whatever reason, you're preventing him from making that, which is good for everyone. Absolutely, absolutely. We're preventing mistakes and then in the worst case scenario of a malicious insider, we're also making sure that they can't unilaterally go in and delete VMs or copy sensitive data out of an environment and create you know, a high risk for the corporation or organization. Perfect, thank you very much. Well, I think that makes it really clear to our viewers what you guys do. And if you want more information and you're here, be sure to visit them at the booth. Otherwise, go to the HITRUST website and learn more.